In order to handle negative numbers, we're going to use the two complement representation. So the two complement representation, the binary vector here, x, which is again given as xn minus 1, x minus 2, and 2x0, this will give the value, and now we will use the phi function again, so phi of x, this will be equal to xn minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 plus xn minus 2, 2 to the n minus 2, and so on, until we have x1 times 2 plus x0. So this is the representation we had before. And now since we are doing our computations modulo 2 to the n, it means now that we can write this as minus n minus 1 times 2 to the n. So we can subtract this number here and still we have the same number if we compute this 2 to the n. Now if we compute this, this we can see is the same as negative x n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 plus x n minus 2 times 2 to the n minus 2 plus and then the same as above so x1 times 2 plus x0 and this can also be written as minus x n minus 1 times 2 to the n minus 1 and then we collect the other terms so we have the sum here when i goes from 0 to n minus 2 and we write x i times 2 to the i. So the most significant bit, which we denoted MSB, now has a negative value here in the representation of our number. So the numbers that we now can write are the numbers in the interval minus 2 to the n minus 1 up to 2 to the n minus 1 minus 1. And since we are working here in the group, with the elements in z2 to the n and we have our only operation which is addition modulo 2 to the n we can write that negative x is congruent to 2 to the n minus x where congruent here means that they are equivalent modulo 2 to the n but they are not equal but they are in the same equivalence class so this we can write as being equal to 2 to the n minus 1 minus x and then we add 1 again and this will be the same in modulo 2 to the n and since we have that 2 to the n minus 1 is written as n ones in this case so here we have n ones and for each binary 1 here we have that 1 minus xi, where xi are these bits, this will be written as xi prime. So 2 to the n minus 1 minus x, from this it follows that this will be xn minus 1 prime, xn minus 2 prime, and until we get to x0 prime and since what we have here is the same as what we have here our negative x can now be written as xn minus 1 prime xn minus 2 prime until x0 prime and then we add a 1 in the end and this 1 here will correspond to this 1 here so if we want to compute the negative of the number x, what we do is that we take the binary representation of x and we take the complement of each of the bits in this binary representation and then we add a 1 in the end. So we get the negative representation of x. So based on this we can now also do subtraction. So let us consider the subtraction that we want to do which is 45 minus 28. So 45 minus 28 can be written as the addition of 45 and negative 
28 and this is what we're going to use when we're doing our subtraction here so this can be written as so 45 is 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 and then we want to add this with the negative of 28 which is 0 0 1 1 1 0 0 this will equal to 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 and now we want to find the negative representation of 28 and this we can write as we saw before as we take first the complement of this binary vector here so we write this in this form and then we want to add 1 in the end so we have 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 and then now we take the complement here so we have 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 and then we add 1 in the end and let us just do this addition here so 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 added to 1 1 0 0 0 1 1 and then we have a 1 coming in as the incoming carry we can see it as so here we will have 1 1 0 and 1 0 1 0 1 1 0 1 0 1 which will give a 1 here if we only represent this with 7 bits we will have 0 0 1 0 0 0 1 which is equal to 17 so we could do this subtraction and we got the right answer but what we want to look a little bit closer at is this one that we got here so what happened here this has to do with the overflow that we get in the two complement case so what we want to do here is that we want to perform the addition of x plus y equals s where x and y can be uh, negative numbers because we have two complement so this should give us an overflow if x and y are positive numbers and s is a negative number which means that we have this case where x is positive y is positive and the result is a negative number because the most significant bit is a one so here we get an overflow we should also get overflow if x and y are negative numbers so they have the most significant bit one and s is a positive number so the most significant bit is a zero so this would also give us overflow However, it should not give us overflow if x is a positive number and y is a negative number. So if the MSB of x is a 0 and the MSB of y is a 1, then it can be the case that we have a positive number. So the MSB of the result is a 0. So this should not give us an overflow. And it should also not give us an overflow in the case where x is a positive number y is a negative number and s is a negative number so again we have the most significant bit of x and the most significant bit of y are 0 and 1 respectively and the most significant bit of the result is a 1 so then we should not have an overflow so if we look at the two last carry bits here in the different situations where we have an overflow and where we do not have an overflow we can see that in this case we can write our overflow function as the XOR of the two last carry bits. So the overflow function can be written as this. So if these two sum to one, then we have an overflow. And if they sum to zero, as they do in this case and in this case, we will not have an overflow. So here is a circuit that will allow us to do both addition and subtraction using numbers in two complement representation. So we have the numbers x and we have the number y. So if we want to do addition here, we send a zero into the subtraction signal, which will let y zero just pass this xor without being changed and will be added to x zero in this case. If we want to do subtraction instead, here what we do is that we take the 1 as an input to the subtraction signal. What will happen then is that we will get the complement here of y0, y1, y2 and y3. So what will happen here is that we get the complement y1 
y3 prime x2 prime x1 prime and here we have x0 prime and then this one that we have here will also be added as our input carry to the first addition so this is the plus one that we have in the expression for getting the negative of a number x and our overflow here will be the xor of the carry c3 and the last carry that we have which we call c4 so this will give us the overflow function 